Hey there folks, got a cool thing today. What we've got here right here in front of us is the new dash pad from Top Flight for the 69 and 68 Torino and Fairlane. We were pretty excited to get this thing in. It's a part that I didn't think anybody was ever gonna reproduce. And yet, here we are. Is it perfect? No. Is it available? <laughs> Absolutely. Right after the break. Restoration of a classic Ford is a journey of discovery. Let Autocrafters help you with yours. We offer quality parts for Falcon, Fairlane, F-Series, Galaxy, Maverick, and Pinto. Contact us today. All right, so what do I have here? This is the new dash pad from the guys at Top Flight. Uh, this dash pad's fairly new. It's not being sent out too much to other places at the point that we got this, which is, you know, May, June of 2023. Um, if you're looking at this in 2024, it's been out for a while and you can probably get it from a number of different suppliers. But we are looking at it before anybody gets a hold of it so we can check it out and let you guys know exactly what we think of what's available. The first thing I'm going to say about this dash pad is I like it. I, I was amazed that this thing even came available because quite frankly, this is one of the more complex dash pads that Ford ever produced. This thing has so much complexity in the original production that I'm not real sure. I wasn't thinking that it would ever be available. And yet, here we are. There are caveats within that, and I'm gonna go through some of the styling issues that this dash pad has compared to an original dash pad, and then kind of explain why I am not concerned about that on the larger scope. One of the big problems that these original dash pads now have some 50 some odd years on is the fact that they are starting to shrink from being out in the sun. The picture I'm showing you right now is of a dash pad from probably a car out of the west or southwest where that dash pad is just trashed. This one was in Texas and it's starting to show some wear and tear. You can look at this and see that on the top right here that this is coving in and it shouldn't. This should not have a dent right here and it does. And that's happening on all four of these pods. The uh, vinyl is pulling away from the metal backing. You can see how this has got a bow to it. It shouldn't have a bow here. This should be nice and flat across this line. And when you look at the backside, and I roll this thing on his base, on his face, this right here is starting to separate. This is not an uncommon problem for these 68 and 9 Torino and Fairlane dash pads. You'll see this quite a good bit on these where they start picking on the two corners and in the center. Uh, it may still stay right where it's pinched up against the windshield by some of the clips, but I've seen a number of these. And I, my other dash pad that I already have in the 69 Fairlane is already starting to do this kind of thing as well. I've not found a satisfactory way to make this thing stick back down. So there you go. Um, and as far as anything else, you'll look at the bottom of this down on the, your information center for your heat controls and all that sort of stuff, uh, and your wiper and lights over here. This is starting to bow out as well. You're starting to see a change in position of this. It's getting fatter in the center over the holes on a couple of different places, particularly this end and this end. So what I'm trying to say by all that is this dash pad is getting pretty tired. And you have to find another dash pad. Well, where are you going to find one? Well, the problem with finding another dash pad is they're expensive. A dash pad like this, this just okay, can run you in the neighborhood of about four to five hundred dollars. A nice new old stock dash pad, I don't even want to think about what the cost on that would be. Probably in the neighborhood of fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. I don't know that for a fact because I can't find one out there in the market. Uh, and I haven't really talked to anybody that, that knows about those types of things like Marty Burke and a couple of the other guys that are really big into the fair lanes. But I can tell you right now, finding a good used dash pad is getting tougher and tougher. Now I'm gonna go into this dash pad and kind of talk about some of the things that it doesn't have that the original dash pad had and why I think that is where this one's concerned. One of the first things you're gonna notice when you're a Torino guy, when you get in the car with this dash pad in place, is the fact that it lacks the stitching around the openings for the gauges and around the reveal up here on the dash pad. This is supposed to have stitching around it like this one does. In a second, I'm gonna talk about why that is. Another thing that I see that's different is it's got these inset rings that are in here, which on the original dash pad go all the way down to the backing ring at the bottom. These inset rings are deep. 
They go right out to the edge of the dash pad. That's different from the original. But I think it's a problem with what they're doing with how they're producing this. And it's not a problem, it's just a limitation of the production ability of this part. You can't do this kind of dash pad overlay on this type of material. Um, and it's gonna be really hard to get this kind of setup done when you're doing a dash pad like this. So I think they did as best they could with what they had available. And it's nice. It's the other, all the rest of the stuff on this is pretty much Mac Daddy. I don't look at any of this and say, oh gosh, this thing is so different. I, won't, I don't want to put it in a car. What I will say these type of dash pads or this dash pad here is really going to be good for is to put into a 68 or 9 Fairlane that is going to be a really nice street driver or a really nice modified car where you're not worried about complete, you know, concours level performance from your parts. It's going to do everything you need it to do. It's going to fill that hole. It's going to put you in there where you can put your clock and all your different gauges in here or go in and do a set of aftermarket gauges like from Dakota Digital, which are now available for these cars in these four pots. It's going to give you that and it's going to give you a beautiful dash pad that doesn't have the waviness at the very front like a lot of these original dash pads do. For my money, like on our 69 Fairlane wagon that we have, this dash pad is going to fill the hole and make me a lot happier because one of the things that bugs the snot out of me is when I'm walking up to my car and I can see this waviness popping up at the front edge of the dash pad right at the edge of the windshield. That's annoying. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pull this dash pad out and I'm going to try putting some of the parts on that these are uh, going to need to make this dash pad work in your car. All right, one thing I will say is this dash pad, because it is not a metal backed dash pad, is a lot lighter than the original. Now I'm going to flip this thing over and I'm going to start working on the holes in here because you have to drill your own holes in order for you to get the pass through for the trim piece. And this is a, a 7 30 seconds hole. Lightly. Don't put a lot of pressure on it because you don't want to pop the uh, front facing vinyl and all off of the backing plate. Drilling all four of these out. Okay, and now I'm going to use my pocket knife. And you can use a utility knife or whatever to do this. Use my pocket knife to open these up. And again, I don't want to use a ton of pressure to go through the plastic or the vinyl. And one of the things I will point out while I'm doing this on the back, and I'm not going to do the rest of these on camera, I'll cut them off later, is when you look at this piece here, you're going to have to center your clock or your blank that goes here because there are no ways to put the original style clip setups on this mounting position here. So that is something that's a little bit different on these that you're going to have to uh, kind of worry into place, so to speak. Off camera, I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of these out, and then we'll put that trim piece on and see how that works out and what it looks like. All right, so I'm going to put the uh, plate in. There's only one way that this plate can go on this panel. I'm not even going to bother looking at it. I'm using 11.30 seconds to put the speed nuts back on. I'm not going to super gorilla up on these. Yep, I've already made a mistake when I cut my hole. Okay. All right, I've created a problem. I thought cutting up next to the plastic here was going to be the way to do this. You can't. You have to cut down below it probably a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch off the plastic. Otherwise, you're cutting into your facing that you can actually see. So I kind of screwed that up. I'm going to see if I can do a little bit of a hide with um, opening the hole up. All right, in the case of don't do as I do, do not do what I did on this dash pad, which is try to cut it from the back. I screwed up the dash pad. I really did. I'm not even going to show it to you. That's how bad it is. That's how embarrassed I am by what I did. 
but it looks trashy if you cut it from the back. What you'll want to do for this panel here is to go in and open it up from the front. You'll go in and make your cuts on the front side down on the bottom of where it coves into the dash. Um, nope, I'm not even going to show you. It's that bad. I want to move on beyond that and talk a little bit about what you have on the back side here with the clips because you have the clips that you need to put the dash pad in with on the top. And that's in this position here. Now these clips, at first I thought they weren't going to clip in like they're supposed to. They actually sit on the dash pad this way and they install and the originals are even kind of a pain in the butt to get on, but these install like this. Try to get that centered up. And they are in roughly the same position as the originals. There we go. They have the indentions on here for where the screws go into the bottom of the dash pad on the fair lane, so those are okay. They look like they're in the right, right position. Ford actually had a cove around where the screw went in. This does not have the cove, but I don't think that's all that big of an issue on the dash pad. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move over here and look at this cove with the original. This is actually an original trim piece. Now all the buttons are popped off the back of it, which is not that unusual on these. Uh, but it's not going to hurt setting this thing in here and seeing wh how it fits. And this actually sits down in there really nice. You know, if these are all popped off the back, get yourself some 3M trim tape, put it on the back side of this, lay it in there, and bada bing, you're good to go. Holes are in the right position for this on the back. I checked them against this. I'll roll it over so you guys can see it. And this is how it would sit. So you can see that they got their holes in the right spot. So you just want to you know, go in and drill these out from the back, doing a slow drill like I showed you before. And then if you have the new one that's available from the guys at Auto Crafters, you can throw that thing in there and you'll be good to go. All right, so there you go. This is the dash pad for the 68 and 69 Torino. Uh, like I said, it is not necessarily a concours level dash pad, but it will get you what you need, especially if you're trying to put a dash together for a modified car or a street driver uh, out there in the world. And because these dash pads, the original dash pads we don't have up here anymore, the original dash pads are really getting harder and harder to find. They're just not out there as much on eBay as they used to be because those cars and those dash pads are all getting chewed up and used in projects. All right, so that's all we have for this week for the review on the 68.9 Torino dash pad that just became available. Do me a favor though, go out and check out the Patreon account at the $10 a month level, you get monthly meetings with me. Also, we're doing some things like we're doing uh, drawings. I do doodles of cars and once a month we're gonna be going out and doing a doodle for somebody's car that wins the drawing on that. I don't know what we're gonna call it. Darren and I will come up with some kind of crazy name that in the next couple of months we'll throw in here. But that's gonna be out there and then once a quarter I will be doing uh, a colored illustration of somebody's car that's basically just a doodle but it's colorized to your car. So those things are gonna be things that you're gonna be able to see if you join up on Patreon at the $10 level. Um, also, check it out for, you're gonna do mugs and t-shirts. Those are gonna be things that everybody can, can stand to win. So it's gonna be kind of neat. We're doing uh, car shows as well, virtual car shows on the group. So it's kind of fun. We're doing a lot of neat stuff. And in those monthly meetings, you get a chance to sit down and chat. <laughs> All right, in those meetings, like I said, you get a chance to sit down and chat with me, ask me tech questions, and try to stump the chump, which, by the way, I'm the chump. So there's your thing for that. Another thing that we do around here that we are so fond of the name of, and that is Super Thanks. That's right, it's your best way. If we do one thing that makes you go, holy cow, Jeff Ford actually taught me something I didn't know. I'm excited to give him lots of money, anywhere from, I don't know, $2 all the way up to a million five. We'll take anything in that range prefer for it to be closer to the million five, but do what you can. If you find it that interesting and that informative, throw some money at us and that money goes like this stuff for Patreon to support Darren coming in here and helping me out. That is how he makes his money. It is literally a capitalist way to do things because if I don't have the money to pay him, I can't pay him. So capitalism at its finest. Do me a favor, folks. 
Be kind to each other, love on each other, treat each other nice. You guys have a great week and we'll see you on down the road. I actually like this pig. I'm gonna put this in the 69 fair lane. I am. It's going in there. Maybe get some of those nice VHX gauges from the guys at Dakota Digital. Throw those bad boys in here on the fair lane. Like a four-door wagon really needs a whole brace of information. Of course, on a fair lane, you gotta have them, you know. You basically get idiot lights for everything. I don't understand why on a mid-sized car, Ford decided to just do idiot lights for everything. Why do you do idiot lights for everything? That just doesn't make sense.